Now, this is our big chunk of the day. This is all about street art. And this weekend, a street artist will be awarded the Biennial Prix du Graffiti here in Paris. Now, the winner will be selected from among 30 or so graffiti artists who wor whose works are currently on display at the Pavillon de l'Eau Gallery, uh, not too far from here in Paris's affluent 16th arrondissement. And all of the artworks will go under the hammer this coming Sunday. And five-figure bids are certain and some may be bought for over 100,000 euros. Now, for more on how graffiti has gone from being perceived as the work of vandals to becoming a sought-after commodity, I'm joined in the studio today by the acclaimed Paris-based street artist Darko. You're very welcome back to the programme. Nice to have me here. It is great to see you again. And first, I would like to turn to my colleague, Rosie Collier, who is with us in the studio for this uh, roundtable. Uh, and Rosie, you've been doing some reporting on street art in Paris and on the Prix du Graffiti. So let's start from the beginning. First, over to Rosie uh, to get a bit of background to why we're here today. When and how did graffiti first make its mark in France, Rosie? Well, graffiti started appearing on railways and streets in the less salubrious suburbs around around Marseille in the south and here in Paris in the 1980s. Uh, young men, mainly from immigrant backgrounds, uh, who were influenced by US hip hop, took to tagging. And like their counterparts in the US, they tagged uh, to mark their territory. Sometimes it was gang related and sometimes not. Uh, some of these guys clashed with police uh, who considered them vandals. Uh, the places they were tagging, though, uh, were often government-owned property, be it uh, railway infrastructure or public housing. Uh, that's still the case today. I mean, just think about your commute to work, uh, David and Dark. I mean, <laughs> prop, you know, uh, is unimaginable without graffiti, right? Sure. Mm. And graffiti is done without permission, for the most part. It consists mainly of tagging. But there are some guys and women uh, with a lot of artistic talent. And of course, present company not accepted here. This is uh, Darko, one of the uh, best uh, graffiti artists um, that the country um, ha is paying host to. But back to you, Rosie. You mentioned talent. What is it that differ differentiates, should I say, graffiti from street art, and from what you've learned? Well, what happened is that some graffiti artists began organising themselves into collectives, this would be, I guess, late 90s, early 2000s, and for them it became about creating pieces of art uh, that uh, were to be enjoyed by the public as opposed to just tagging. Mm. And um, a good example of this is the Galerie Internerance in the 13th district of Paris. It's a collective of over 100 street artists today. Uh, they have a gallery space that's tucked away behind the uh, Francois Mitterrand on library but the works that uh, impact most that are done by the collective are those huge frescoes painted on the sides of high-rise buildings in the 13th district and what's interesting is that in 2004 the collective got permission uh, from the then mayor of the 16th 13th district sorry mm. to paint murals uh, on public buildings and crucially they negotiated a contract whereby the collective gets to touch up existing murals, murals and paint new ones. So this is street art as opposed to graffiti, uh, although I imagine some collective members still consider themselves graffiti artists. I imagine Darko has some interesting things to say about the differences and similarities between graffiti and street artists. Yes, um, gra gra there's, th there are lots of different graffiti um forms. Uh, it can be stencils, it can be tagging or graffiti writing, uh, uh, drawing letters and stuff. Uh, but it can also be uh, all, all other ki kinds of things uh, such as graphic design, illustrations. Uh, <gasps> Of which there's a lot now coming much more to the fore. Like uh, we have a colleague here, Claire Broadhurst, who actually has a little uh, Instagram uh, uh, photo kind of gallery, if you will, of all of these little small kind of Banksy-esque artworks that are popping up all over around power. So it's really become a thing now, hasn't it? It's a graf graffiti and street art is a big, big global uh, culture. Uh, and it has been since almost 50 years now. And there's not a lot of uh, cultures of uh, art cultures that are that old. Now, how would you? I'm, not, I'm. We never like to pigeonhole people, but do you consider yourself a street artist, a graffiti artist, or a graffiti writer? Um, I consider myself as an artist, but I'm coming from the graffiti writing background. So basically, I'm uh, concentrating myself on the 
on the lettering and I try to transform them and, and to build them up and make them into new images, which are not necessarily fig figurative. Um, so it's kind of an abstract painting. And, and then I put some, some uh, characters, for example, uh, to the side just to illustrate them. And, and uh, I started doing big murals in, at the, in the 80s, even the, the late 80s, and, and, and I always wanted, like for me, it was always an art. And, and I make no difference whether a painting has been done in a, in a, uh, with a, an illegal background or legal oh. background. So you were drawn to it initially just because of the power of the art itself. But yes. then, and then there was the foundation of that FBI, Darko <laughs> FBI, back yeah. in the 80s. Yeah. Um, tell us a little about how does one go about founding a kind of a graffiti street art foundation, especially going back as far as the mid 1980s you know we're going back over 30 years now yeah basically i just had some friends who were interested in the same culture and we tried to to hook up and to paint murals and it's difficult uh, to have the paint that's necessary to paint a big mural so we all came together and, and put our paint together and painted big murals all together and then we just first did whatever we could and then we tried to planify it a bit more and made Frescoes, basically. So that is really, one could say, the birthplace of the kind of ideal of a collective, if you will, when it comes to like a, an art collective. I'm or... not sure if that's the basics, but <laughs> <laughs> I well, don't know. Maybe it was still caves, a group effort. They were, they were, yeah, it was a group effort, effort but yeah. maybe in the caves it was as well. I'm sure in Lasso <laughs> or wherever it might be. But now you, you mentioned there about um, uh, the culture of graffiti. Now, um, you know, when Rosie alluded to this about, you know, coming up from like, you know, steeped in hip hop, how does music affect graffiti and or street art styles? I mean, New York was very influenced by hip hop. Detroit was very influenced by electro. What influence, let's say, do we have in Paris or Marseille or maybe Versailles, where Air, the group, came from? Does it have a difference? Is there a different uh, musical kind of background to the, the crew, if you will, that work in various cities in France? Well, as there are very different uh, ideas of graffiti, for for example, stencils are, are, is graffiti, but it's totally different. And there's like rock alternative kind of graffiti. Then there's political graffiti. Then there is graffiti writing uh, and also graphic design or illustration or pop art. And all this comes together in under the name of street art. And, 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 and sometimes it doesn't have anything to do uh, with one another. Mm -hmm. But... Uh, in my case, uh, it, it was the hip hop influence from New York. They mm. hopped over into uh, to Europe, and I uh, first started to listening to to the music and started to break dance and stuff like that. And I was drawing since I was a little kid, so the the, the imagery kind of spoke to me. Spoke and the to first you. time I actually saw it consciously was in the movie called The Warriors, uh, and I saw that movie in in, in the theaters, and and I sort of like liked the character that was uh, just drawing instead of fighting, and and so I just started to look at it, and and maybe to draw it in, in my little drawings I did on paper, and after a while I just started to go in the streets because I wanted to show what I was uh, doing, and 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 I always tried to do the best I could. I just I, I didn't start tagging actually. Yeah. I started drawing things, and and just to show to people there was no other solution uh, as to go into the streets. Well, that's a great history. Now, let's just say we can fast forward right up until uh, this year. We saw uh, last month the British, uh, well, graffiti artist, street artist, I suppose street artist or graphic street artist, uh, Banksy, who shocked the world when a member of his entourage actually activated a shredder. I mean, it was something that went viral and everybody was just like, oh my God, what has happened <laughs> with the this um, art being shredded out of its frame? But it still went on to, to gather millions at auction. Uh, what do you feel, or what are your feelings about, uh, especially now what we were talking about with Rosie today, about um, street art becoming a commodity in modern time? Well, that's a good thing because uh, we're all artists and we all may, uh, have to make a living. Uh, so uh, it's a good thing that, mm. that it can be done in, in, in different ways. It can be in the art market. It can be in, in other markets if, as a designer, for example, or architect or whatever. Um, and I think gra graffiti and gra graffiti writing is an excellent school for a lot of people and that, so that they can... Uh, uh, move on and have a project in life. And, and so it's a good thing that people can actually 
live off their passion. Indeed, it's something that they can actually aspire to actually make a living out of, I suppose. That's a positive side indeed. And uh, back to you, Rosie, uh, our director, our in-house director, we can say. Um, uh, you just produced a video report about this Prix du Graffiti. Now, tell us about the video. Well, it's a profile of this man, Cédric Naimi, who's uh, playing in the background, but for those who can't see, um, I filmed him on a couple of occasions earlier this month. Um, our first rendezvous was in uh, Le Pavillon de l'eau that you mentioned earlier, where the artworks are currently on display and will be until Sunday. Um, he explained, to, to begin with, that graffiti artists were sceptical about the prize, actually, and that selecting a jury was also complicated. Um, but he persisted, and since its debut in 2013, the Prix de Graffiti has uh, now apparently gained the respect of most graffiti artists. Um, and uh, on the one hand, the Prix de Graffiti is about recognising talent, that's for sure. This year, the theme is water. Uh, graffiti artists were invited to paint frescoes um, with water as the main theme. And there are some stunning pieces of work on display there mm. at the gallery. But on the other hand, the Prix de Graffiti and the associated exhibition is about business. Uh, although Cedric refused to be drawn in on the issue of money, I did pose those questions he to him. He wasn't short a few quid anyway, do you think? I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Um, but, you know, the, the fact that all the artworks will be auctioned on Sunday shows that business is one of the motivating factors for artists and organisers. But just, you know, as Darko just said... Uh, good for them it's a way to, to make a living out of their passion um, I mean I'll be at the prize giving ceremony on Saturday uh, so I can report back to you oh, on Monday yeah. we'll hear about, about that. who won and uh, how much was paid for the highest uh, selling piece of work um, but until then you can go to our website and that's uh, www.en.rfi.fr to watch the video about the breeding graffiti and to read more uh, about uh, art uh, street art here in Paris and indeed apart from that complicated uh, link that is also linked to rfienglish.com. Uh, Darko, the final word over to you. Have you ever met uh, uh, Monsieur, is it André? Is that his name? Cyril? Cédric, sorry, Cédric. Cédric. Have you ever met this uh, gentleman? Yes, I did. And what, what do you make of him and what do you think of this prize? Do you think it is something worthwhile? It's a good thing. It's a good project to actually um, officializing a bit more because uh, there's still a lot uh, to be done uh, that ha needs to be done uh, concerning graffiti and graffiti. Um, writing and street art and etc. There's a lot to be done that needs to be done. And we it's just started right now. And it's getting underway. Okay, well, look, I have to say to both of you, Rosie Collier from uh, Radio France International's In The Service, my thank you for coming into the studio today. And Darko, thanks again for coming thank in. Thank you very much. And giving us the opportunity to really delve into the history and uh, the passion that is behind street art. Uh, my thanks to both of you. You're listening to Paris Live.